Haggerty, Classic Car TV. Hi everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Haggerty Classic Car TV. I'm Jamie Lamont and for this week's episode our crew heads back to Jay's Garage where Rob and Jay talk Corvairs. Let's have a look. On the topic of technically interesting but affordable cars, Corvair jumps out of me. Yeah, I think these, you know what's interesting, <clears throat> the Corvair was deemed a failure. They sold 1.8 million of them. Now if you sell 1.8 million of anything now, well, you'd be a huge success. But in the 60s, when they were making a sell a million Mustangs a year, 800,000 Mustangs a year, a million over a nine year period, that was not particularly successful. Now you sell 40,000 of anything, oh my God, you're the king of the world. But you can still get Corvairs pretty reasonable. Uh, <clears throat> people argue with me, but I, it really is a poor man's Porsche. You've got a four speed, you've got a flat six cylinder engine, made more horsepower than any Porsche of the period, especially with the turbo on it. This was, this and the Oldsmobile, were the first turbocharged cars in America. A uh, very primitive turbo on it, it's just no wastegate or it doesn't pop off or anything, but it's mostly up at the top end, but you really feel it, and they're a lot of fun to drive, and this is the Corvair Ram side. Um, this is, I bought this for $600, and we restored it. The way it works, you buy it for 600, you put 50 grand in it, you sell it for 12.5. Better than the stock market. <laughs> but the great thing about these Corvairs was, in the event of an accident, you're the first one on the scene because you, you're right here. You're you are, feet you are are, of, yeah, you are right yeah. there. You you are the eyewitness to it. Because I mean, you're sitting right here. Your knees are right here. So if there's any accident, boom, you are right there, first one. I I saw it, officer, before anybody else. But the engine, of course, in the back. It was such a revolutionary car for the period. Um, I think if uh, Nader hadn't come along, and I think basically it was good that he came along, but the interesting thing about that whole Corvair situation was they sold more copies of the book that year than they did the car. The Corvair had been totally redesigned since now Ralph Nader had written the book. Mm -hmm. So the problem with the swing arms, the swing arms had gone away. And so kind of the next generation of Corvair was fine. And the other funny part is Ralph Nader actually prolonged the life of the Corvair because they were going to drop it when the Mustang came out, but they didn't want to look like they were buckling under the, to this young lawyer. So they kept it going to 1969. Yeah. But this is a cast, classic case again of it. it had a six cylinder. Yeah, but the Mustang had a V8. And once again, could have had a V8. Yeah. You know. The interesting thing about this though is it's always appealed, I think, to certain respective import guys who maybe right. not, might not look at a bow tie car. That's right. When you when you see the ad to the period, the guy would have like that kind of straw hat kind of deal. Mm -hmm. He'd have the driving gloves with a pipe and he'd be have his hand on the shifter and you know, this was an American sports car. It really was a poor man's Porsche. Uh, they did they won a lot of rallies with them. People are amazed at how well they handle. <clears throat> the real trick to these was low air pressure. You know, you ran 18 pounds on the front tires, but Americans, oh no, pump them up as high as get better gas yeah. mileage. So consequently, people would plow off the roads and have problems. And yeah, it's just a matter of people not paying attention. Yeah. You know, they just don't, we Americans don't like to follow directions. You get in the car and go, and then when it breaks, what happened? Give me the book. Oh! <laughs> But it's, it's a really pretty car. I remember Davey Davis writing yeah. back in Car and Driver. And he thought this was one of the prettiest American cars of the era. And it really, you know, you look at the first generation Corvair, kind of boxy. This is a beautiful car. Yeah, you know, when you look at it as a styling exercise out of the period, I think this would be a good looking car today. Uh, it's fairly contemporary. Uh, but we like that long hood, short rear deck. That was a yeah. Mustang had come in, so it just looked a little. Yeah, it does not have that period. Portion, but you know, there's, there are certain good. shapes. The original Hudson Hornet, this car, Volkswagen to a certain extent. There are certain shapes that just hold forever. You know, you almost have to see them long after their due date to see if they still hold up. And this is, this is a classic example of that. But again, you can pick Corvairs up from anywhere from a few hundred dollars. I think the best one in the world is maybe 20,000, some concourse car. Now, if you have one that's sold for 30, don't get angry, but for the most part, that's where they, that's where they run. And the nice thing is, almost every state has a Corvair club, and the guys are fanatical about them, and they know all the minutia. There are people making five-speed transmissions you can put in them, so it's a real enthusiastic group, and they're, and they're really nice cars. They're being air-cooled, 
There's never any water pump problems or any of that nonsense. True. This week's ride along features no roads, no wheels, and a lot of snow. Let's take a look. I think you're absolutely right. People have an interest in it. It, it relates back to what they did as a kid or what their dad did as a kid or their family did and they did jointly together 30, 40 years ago. And it's, and it's still the type of technology that the average guy can go out and work on. You, know, you don't have to have a $10,000 computer to uh, diagnose if you're a four-stroke, seven-horse Kohler motor's running or not. You know? <laughs> it's pretty obvious, you know, and, it, and it's something you can take apart and fix, your, fix yourself with a little knowledge and a, and a good manual, so you can do those things. That's it for this week's episode of Haggerty Classic Car TV. If you're planning on attending the Amelia Island Concours this year, make sure you check out Haggerty's free seminar, Defying the Economy, where they discuss Enzo era Ferraris, Shelby's, and other blue chip classics. For more information, check out the website below. See you next week.